Hey guys, welcome to Incente, the YouTube channel dedicated specifically to beginner and intermediate Go players to help them get better at the game. So have you ever played the opening in Go and after the first like five moves had no idea what to do? Like do I extend on this side? Do I extend on this side? Do I extend on the upper side? Do I approach him? Like what do I do? I've had that problem a lot. Fortunately, I found a book called Opening Theory Made Easy by Otake Nindan. It's a really, really good book, highly recommend it, and it has some great tips for choosing which direction you want to extend from, and the basic ideas of direction of play in the opening. Hopefully after this video you'll have a better idea about which side to extend from, which corner to strengthen, etc, etc, and um, that'll help you when you're figuring out, you know, where to go in the opening. Let's get started! Alright, so we're going to start out basic and then get a little more advanced as we go along. Um, the first thing that the book talks about and that I would like to talk about is uh, the importance of corners. Um, so there's a few different places that you can play on the go board. I mean that people generally do starting off, right? There's the 4-4 four, four point, there's the 3-4 point, and then there's the weird stuff like, you know, the 5-4 point, and then this is a little older, the 3-3 three, three point. Um, for now, we're going to focus on the 3-4 point, and I'm going to do a video on the star point uh, probably coming up in a few weeks. Um, so let's focus on the 3-4. So now Black has the choice of where to go, right? Um, corners in the basic Fuseki, so this is like very basic. Of course, there are advanced openings, there's the Great Wall, there's the play in the center of the board on the first move, there's the low Chinese, the high Chinese, and those are pretty advanced openings. I just want to teach basic, the basic Fuseki and the basic principles of the corner. So if you have a 3-4 stone, you should not deliberate at all before enclosing it. Um, enclosing the corner builds about, according to the book, 10 points of secure territory, as well as giving you places uh, to expand. You can expand along this edge, expand along this edge, and it, you can build some influence with it as well. Um, so the corner is a valuable place to go, and there is nothing wrong with Black's making a simple enclosure in this situation. Now, if Black did not do that, and let's say Black didn't watch this video, and decides to play something like this, right, then White would be a good idea to take the corner as well. Uh, doing that would likewise reduce the amount of points that Black could get, and essentially this 3-4 stone that was aiming at capturing the corner isn't really doing its job. Now it's going to have to try to find another direction to extend from, or only get half the corner. Um, you know, there's the Joseki where, you know, there's this where he still keeps some of the quarter, but he's building white up a fair amount, and then white's much stronger here than it would have been if, white, if black would have just enclosed the corner in the first place. So, if it's the first few moves of the game and you're looking for a place to go, and you see a 3-4 point, either yours or your opponent's, either enclosing that corner or approaching that corner, if it's your opponent's move, is a great way to start and builds a good amount of solid territory, as well as giving you places to extend. Okay, so this blew my mind when I first read about it. Um, let's say you have an enclosure. Alright, so let's say it is Black's move, and this is the game, and Black has this corner enclosure and he's looking to figure out what to do next. The natural progression for a corner enclosure is to extend on the sides. So Black has two options for his extension. He can go here, or he can extend here. It turns out that one of those is significantly better than the other. This is what's called the primary direction of a corner enclosure. So do you see how this corner enclosure is facing the upper part of the board? This is the corner's primary direction, which means that this extension right here, is the most valuable point on the board for both sides. Reason is, if white were to stop black from gaining any more points, black extends up, we see this really symmetrical and strong uh, development of the lower left-hand side. So the corner meshes very nicely with the side extension into a very large Moyo-type development that makes it very hard for white to invade and reduces points. 
Now let's compare that to if you were to extend in the other direction, here. So we can see that this shape is not as balanced as the shape that I'd previously shown you, and it's a little harder to make as many points uh, than in the previous situation. So this is not the primary direction of extension for black. Uh, let's just go back again and compare. This is the primary direction, and this is stronger than extending in this area of the board. Now let's say black didn't know that and decided to do something else. Doesn't matter what he did. White should not waste any time. White should play there because this is the most valuable point to the board for both sides. So now white is the one that's meshing really nicely with its corner enclosure here. Now, let's say this happened. It's still all right for black to play here. He still gets a nice framework. It's just not as optimal as if black were to make this move first. So that is the primary direction of a corner enclosure. So in your games, next time you make a corner enclosure or you see your opponent make a corner enclosure, Look at the primary direction of his play. Did he fill that point in yet? If not, fill that in. And if it's your enclosure, waste no time in getting that point, because that will give you a really nice um, development um, that will help you out in the rest of the game. Okay, so as with every principle, or every series of, you know, guidelines to follow, there's going to be exceptions, and there's going to be spots where, like, the rules sort of break down. It's a little bit hazy. So let's just examine just a few of those to give you guys a sense of, you know, what to look out for and the complications that can ensue. Uh, first one I'd like to show you guys is, let's say that white knows this. Like, white knows that this is a very valuable extension for black and it wants it first. So white plays here first, without enclosing the corner. Thinking, aha, that's, that's so much better. It's not necessarily better. So if black plays here, It is really unclear if that side extension was better than simply enclosing the corner in the first place. Um, as I mentioned in the first principle, you know, according to the basic Fuseki, enclosing corners that are started by the 3-4 point stone are the biggest. Um, they're bigger than side extensions. So if you have a choice between extending to the side or enclosing your corner, depending on what your strategy is, in general it would make more sense to enclose your corner first. So keep in mind of that. This isn't necessarily better than letting black get that side extension and closing your corner. Okay, the second thing I want to show you guys is let's say that... All right, so let's say that black ends up approaching here and white does a pincer thing. Black extends and white extends. Could be really anything. Um, this is the specific example that they showed in the diagram that I read. Uh, it is now least valuable for black to make this extension because this corner is already fought over so much that this, even though it might mesh well with this other wall, this doesn't have any room for extending to the other part of the board and making more points. So actually, if this corner is fought over, this is the least valuable point uh, to make, and black should try to find another extension or enclosure uh, to make instead. So as another sort of general rule of thumb, if a corner is being fought over, the s extensions near that corner are less valuable than corners that haven't been trampled all over yet. Okay, last caveat. So let's say we have this sort of situation going on. Uh, as we know, black's extension to the corner is the most valuable. However, white also has a, an enclosure whose primary direction is here. So now black sort of has a choice. Does it make a less valuable extension to take away white's primary direction? Or does it make its own primary direction enclosed and allow white to do the same? And I think the judgment is really that it sort of depends. It depends on the board, it depends on the way that you want to play. You know, you should always try to play the openings that you're comfortable with and play the style that you're comfortable with. Um, if you don't like playing with, against an opponent with really large giant frameworks, make sure to play stones so that you break them up and he can't make those large frameworks. On the other hand, if you like that sort of thing, let him do that. There's a lot of freedom in the opening, but I think that I really have a better handle now on sort of the basics. If you make a corner enclosure, you know, where's the best place to get that side extension? 
and what should you do after all the corners are basically taken up. Um, hope you guys learned a lot. Uh, definitely give me a like, comment, and subscribe for more of these videos. I would definitely like to know, you know, if these this advice maybe sort of helped you understand the opening a little better. Um, definitely help me. So, looking forward to seeing how things work out. I'll see you on the grid.